Hi! In this video I'm going to show you how to work needle weaving on a Hishigazari decoration. So let's get started. So the first thing that we need to do is create the shape. So I'm using our Hishikasari template and I'm going to use the largest one. I've decided I'm going to use black card just um, so that the ends have a little bit of interest. You can of course use whatever colour you want. Um, I'm also, because it's just a scrap piece of card, I know that the edges aren't straight so I'm going to trace, well, draw around. template in its entirety but if you've got a straight edge you can just line up the edge to the edge. I'm going to cut this out just inside of the line because obviously when you draw around a shape then the shape becomes a little bit bigger. Try to get it as straight as you can, but there's no need to use rulers and anything like that. You can just use scissors still. It's not, it's not going to cause a problem if it's a little bit out. The next thing to do is to score the um, piece of card. Uh, this is about a 300 GSM card, if I recall correctly. Now, I've got a full, um, another full video on doing a basic Ishigazari wrap, which I'll link down below in the description so that you can see the step-by-step -step on how to actually create the basic um, covering. So the first thing to do is to find, with your scoring tool, you can use any scoring tool, you can use the stick that comes with the, the kit or you can use a, a different scoring tool if you prefer. And you just need to find the engraved holes, as it were, and that's your score lines. And so you'll be able to press into that. This is one of the reasons why card is actually better, because paper can um, actually split when you're scoring it like this. So obviously if you've got card you're creating a, a stronger shape in the long run but you are also um, creating a better score. So I'll just move that aside and you can possibly just see the score lines that I've created. I know it's hard to see it black but the finished will look nice. So I'm just folding now and I'm going to fold in both directions because then it makes it just that little bit easier for the whole thing to go together I think because you don't have to worry about which bit folds to where and then it will just sort of come together into a shape. Really very straightforward, very easy to do. Now I'm going to pop some tape because you'll see the edges just join, sort of join up but together they don't over, there's no overlaps on this template. Now if you want a slightly stronger shape I would advise using a masking tape and then you could coat the whole thing with say Mod Podge or um, sorry, that's just tucked in um, a gel medium and let it dry and that will soak into the tape as well but as you can see I'm just using some clear tape. You won't see this so no need to worry about sort of what you use it's just the point that you want to tape those together. Oops. Just burnish that a little bit so that it stays in place. 
Right, so now we can get to the covering. I'm going to work directly from the ball. I'm using a uh, number eight pearl cotton. Um, I like using pearl cotton if you haven't figured it out for a lot of projects because of the defined line that the twist gives. So I'm going to start out using directly from the um, ball itself because I'm just going to do some wrapping initially. So just line up and pop a bit of tape to hold my thread in place. I'm going to go as close as I can to the corners. And then I'll begin wrapping. As I said, the, the actual wrapping um, technique is gone over much more slowly in the other video. But basically, what you're doing is anchoring the thread on the corners. You want to keep the thread fairly tight, much like working a thread wrapped button. And try to keep your each row close together, close to the, the previous row, and that will help to give a more um, solid covering. So I think I will do, let's see, five or six. Let's go with six rows before I change. And when you count your rows, make sure that you count on all three sides. So there's six along that one, and six along that one if I counting, I count the first, because what I'm doing is I'm just going to count at that very first point there, and just here, so that will be fine. And then that should be six all round, so yep. So I've just cut the end from the um, wall and I'm going to thread up a needle. Get the right needle. A tapestry needle is good for this, but anything really will work. To put that down. I'm actually using a hook needle. Um, a hook needle has just you may not be able to see so clearly, but it just has a little bit of a, a curve to it, and it is for needle weaving. So it's a really nice um, needle to use for things like this because you can just get underneath. Now I'm just going to catch that underneath. And I'm going to bring it around to this side just to help, just so that it holds in place. Each subsequent row will cover up your workings of the previous row. And so, as long as you're careful, you shouldn't need to worry about changing. However, if you're ever concerned that maybe your wrapping's not so tight and you're changing colors, um, and you're worried about if it goes in line or not, you can always add a bit of tape there as well. You see I've got a cross over here. I've crossed one row over, so I'm just going to get that lined up before I go any farther. Okay, so that's what we have so far. 
Now I'm going to take a long length of a darker pink, about an arm's length, give or take. And I'm going to thread this onto the needle singly as well. And I'm going to take this, I'm going to weave pretty much where I wove through for the end of the previous one, which has come up now. That's all right. As long as I take it over that one, I'll snip that end in just a moment. Now, I'm going to weave and I'm going to make it up more or less as I go along as I'm actually wrapping around. So I will wrap in the same direction, but I'll just change up what I'm doing for the wrap. So the first thing that I'll do is one plain row, just so that we can establish where we're at, because it can get confusing otherwise. And as you can see, that's how you can achieve stripes. So now, I'm going to go over the dark pink and under the light pink. And then under the light pink over the dark pink. And I'm going to go ahead and do this for a few rows. I'm not quite sure. See how much thread I have left. But I will do the same thing all of the way around. Always going under, now over the self color and under the light. And then I'm going to go ahead and do one um, plain row so that I can close off this square that we've created. And then I will just, when I get back to the beginning, I'll just weave that through. And then this time I'm going to weave it underneath here just to sort of catch it. And you can keep doing this, going around underneath, just to give yourself a little bit more um, space because then you can move the threads around. Now, because I've now caught up, I'm just going to take this light one as well and snip that. So here's what we have so far. And you can see that you can just carry on making it up as you go along virtually. So let's reverse that out and this time take the light thread and thread this up. And let's see, let's see, this is where I started the other one. So I think this time what I'm going to do is I'm just going to weave under because I've got a few threads there now. And I'll leave a little bit of a length until this is established and I'll do one plain wrap. So basically I'm going to do kind of what I already did with the dark. So one plain wrap. As you can see, you can just doodle away, just deciding what you want to weave. So that's emphasized that. So this time I'm going to go over the pink, the light pink, 
So the self same color and under the dark pink. And I will carry on and do that on all of the sides. Just overlap there so I can just take my needle and get those back into line. It's not quite forgiving really. It's such a clever way of wrapping, it's really good. I think weaving just adds an extra dimension. I've got a little kink here in my thread, so just get rid of that now. There we go. Before it causes me a nightmare. There's the two rows and you can see how that's starting to develop. So I'll just carry on with this. So that will make it to four. So then I'll do just as before one plain to enclose what we've done on this pattern. And then again, a little bit of weaving under everything just to hold it all in place. Snip that, snip the beginning. You can see what we're creating now. So that's quite nice. And remember that you can always tweak with your uh, nail or with the needle to just get everything lined up where it needs to be. So I'll go back to the dark now. And then do something a little bit different. So time to add another thread. This time, I think that what I'll do is, let's see, how shall I do this? Let's do one wrap initially, so I can think of what pattern I'd like to see emerge. So one plain wrap all of the way around. Now I think I will go under the light pink, obviously over the dark all of the way around. I'm going to work some arrows. So for one row it will just be under all of the light and over all of the dark. And this will help to secure everything in place as well.
So that's row two. Now, sorry about my squeaky chair. I try not to move, but every once in a while I have to. Okay, so this time let's go over the first of the light and the last of the light. So I'm going under three in the middle. Over all the pink and then we'll repeat it there which happens to also. No, that one's under four. So the second, the first stripe was wider than my second stripe, which is fine. And you see, this is where you sort of come into your own because you can work whatever designs you want. You can come up with all sorts of wonderful patterns working this, especially when you're just sort of, as I say, just making it up as you go along. Just say, oh, I'll weave over this one. So these little shapes, they're absolutely fantastic as ornaments, which is what they are um, initially used for. So they are part of the Hina Matsuri, which I've probably said wrong, and I apologize, um, but the Girls' Day festivals. And in some parts of Japan, they make hanging, uh, like mobiles, as the decorations for this festival. And they're stunning, and they have all sorts of lovely things hanging. And the these shapes are one of the things covered in beautiful silks are one of the things that you will see on these mobiles so obviously that that is what they're they're meant to be light and decorative and of course they are being just made out of card but you could put um, a little bell inside if you wanted to. Work them all in Christmas colors. Work them in any colors really for any other, any sort of um, design. But as a mobile, they're decoration. They're really lovely. So I've come full circle again. And so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go in one more. So that I'll make, I'll end up making like a little triangle shape. And you can see it developing. So I'll carry on doing that all of the way around. So I'm now at the last row and because my light pinks are slightly different widths, so I've got two and I've got one on each of the um, triangles, all I'm going to do is I'm going to do one plain wrap going over all just to close that off. And when you're working the weaving, you will notice that your threads will separate a little bit. They won't line up quite as well as they do when you're just wrapping because obviously you're dislodging them when you're weaving. Don't worry about that because you can go ahead and fix that with your... Um, in fact, I'm going to take back that way, I think, to finish. Actually, no, I want to come up to here. 
So I'm just going to weave this underneath a few. Just so that I can finish that off and it will be secure in there. That should do it. ending up really really interesting now and so as I say you can if you need to you can just take your needle and tweak those up so that they're just a little bit closer together depending on uh, what you choose to do for your design squeaky chair again right I'm going to go back to the light now and I think I'm not going to weave this one I think what I'll do with this one is I will just do some plain wrap so we can focus on that design and so I just want to weave through an end so that it catches the thread let's see I'm going to put it over here because I have a few on that side so I've just it's still connected to the ball, okay? So I've just taken through an end, because we're getting quite a bit now. There's no knot there, so you do have to be careful initially. You don't want to pull that through. And then I'm going to go ahead and start wrapping. I'm going to do a few plain wraps. So I thought about setting up a second camera at a different angle so that I have some interesting cuts, which would be quite nice. And then we thought, well, if we set it up with my face and sort of the, my whole, which I still might do, but if I do that, I have to stop sticking my tongue out or biting my lip, which is what I do tend to do when I'm concentrating. And I have to try to remember not to do it when I'm on TV. But I do have a tendency to do that, so... It's worth remembering as well when you're working that you've got your front piece and if some of the sides go a little off it won't be as noticeable. You see I've got a little gap here but I'm covering that over so you'll get more accustomed to what gets covered and what doesn't as you work. Let's see how many rows shall I do? I think I'll do five taking me back up. So let's get this one tucked in. We're getting there now. I think that I can just finish off with um, the dark pink now. I actually quite like the way that the, the black looks through it as well. That's quite interesting. So I probably should have brought black thread into the studio because that could, could have looked really nice. 
backwards. So again, I'll just get this connected. It almost doesn't matter where now. Because we're on the home straight. But I'll do as I did before, just gently pull it through. And then just wrap. So I'll continue to wrap and then I'm just going to do a plain wrap all of the way around. I've gone pretty much as close as I can get to the corners. Try to always finish at the bottom because that way you've got a lot of place places where you can sort of weave through your thread so that your final thread is nice and tight. So what I usually do, sorry that's come unthreaded, is I weave through and then if I can I'll anchor it on just one thread and then weave back and I can tuck that up underneath and that will usually help to lock it because it's going in two directions and then I can also take it the end out somewhere else before I trim it. If you're at all worried about your um, wrapping and you think well it might come off you can always put a little bit of glue on the ends that's not a problem um, or you could coat the whole thing in Mod Podge if you want something that's going to sort of last longer or in a shellac or something but I'm just going to leave this as it is but I'll show you how to make a very simple hanging tassel for it now right so I'm going to show you how to make a hanger take a long length of thread, it doesn't matter which color, I've doubled it over. I'm going to thread the doubled end onto a long darner and take it down so that it's four threads. I'm going to come up from the bottom straight up to the top point. And as you can see, you can also decorate long hat pin style pins with these as well, just by doing the same thing. I'm going to cut the needle off and tie an overhand knot, simple overhand knot, and trim that off so it makes a little bit of a sorry about that, a little bit of a tassel and then I'm going to come down a little bit farther and I'm going to do a second knot and that's going to give me a hanging loop. I'm going to draw this through and then I'm going to work an overhand knot at the base but I want this to come up to as close to this point as I can. So just get a needle or a pin and as you're tightening the knot, tighten that down as close as you can to the shape. Okay, and just use that just to connect it down. There we go. So that is our very, very simple hanging decoration, but I think that's a little thin. I'm sure you do too. So cut that, fold the excess in half. If you've not got enough excess there, don't worry. Just hold that there. Now I'm going to use a different color here just so that I can show you what I'm doing but I would probably use the same color ordinarily. So I'm going to fold, just loop the end 
of this thread. I'm going to work a binding knot. I'm going to hold that binding knot, that, that loop, so that it's going down towards the fringe. I'm going to take the long end and wrap it around those threads quite tightly, working down towards the fringe. This can be as long as you want it to be, but it can't cover the loop entirely. Now sometimes if you work it too tight, you'll have a little bit of difficulty in the next stage, but that's alright. Better to be too tight. So I'm going to stick the end through that loop, the long end through the loop, and then I'm going to take the short end and I'm going to pull it up and keep pulling until this end on that loop goes up underneath those wraps and that's why you, you want it tight but not too tight otherwise you won't be able to do that. And then snip this close. Now normally I would do the same color on this particular type of tassel because it's quite a thin one and leave that end dangling so that I'm only snipping the short end. But as I say, entirely up to you. And there's your binding knot. Needs a little bit of a trim. Okay. And then come down, cut straight across, and there's your little tassel. All ready to hang up on a tree or anywhere else you choose. Thanks ever so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that and I hope it inspired you to do some needle weaving doodling on your Hishikazari. Take care of yourselves now. Bye bye.